No matter how many times I've seen that video, it still moves me because I love it. I love the fact that our church, from the very beginning, we have decided from the get-go, we're not going to be an inward-looking church. We're not going to be an inward-focused church. Instead, we have chosen to intentionally focus on our community, focus on the people who have not yet understood the love of God, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, and we put ourselves in the back seat for the sake of those whom God really loved and died for through His Son, Jesus Christ. And that's what we're all about as a church. And you should be proud of the fact that you belong to this church. And I'm so proud, not because I'm the pastor of this church, but I'm just so proud that we listen to the heartbeat of God in wanting to bless our community with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hey, my name is Daniel. For those of you who are new to church, I'm so thrilled that you're here. And if you're not a follower of Jesus Christ, let me tell you, I really believe in the spiritual realm. God was the one who led you to this place. So I want you, like Peter said, to lean in and pay attention because what you're about to hear today has the potential to change your destiny, to change your life. And if you are already a follower of Jesus Christ, all the more you need to lean in and listen because what you're, what you're about to hear today, you cannot dismiss just like that. We have something important that we want to communicate to you and that something important is this. I'm just going to lay it out there for you. We want as many people who call this church home as possible to serve with us. We want as many of you to serve with us and join a ministry team right here uh, so that we can carry out the mission, the vision that God has given our church. And I want to motivate you with this story that we recently had. We have Reese Burgess. Two weeks ago, he was baptized in our church during the lockdown. And unfortunately, we couldn't videotape his his testimony, but we have his testimony written down, and Riz told me, Pastor Daniel, feel free to, to share it with the church. I want to encourage the people of this church. I want to encourage people who are new in the journey of faith so that they too can possibly take my journey of faith. So this is his testimony. Riz said, before I, came, before I became a Christian, I was embroiled in the rituals of religion. This never made me feel close to God. Instead, it left me feeling empty and hollow. I felt distant from God. I felt God had abandoned me. Perhaps I didn't do the rituals correctly. Ultimately, I felt alone and began to question whether what I believed was true or just something I had been taught to believe. A sense of confusion became apparent in my life and manifested in various ways. I believe it was God's hand that led me to the rocks. What I experienced at the rocks was totally different than my previous experience with church. I couldn't believe church could be so casual yet relevant and personal. I felt the presence of God every time I came here and started to get to know Him better and better. While I have heard all my life that Jesus died on the cross, I never understood what it meant personally for me. Jesus actually died to pay for my sins. Eventually, I asked Jesus into my life as my God and Savior. After I asked Him into my life as my God and Savior, I began to see changes in situations and people, namely my perception of them. My understanding and approach to various situations changed. I felt and feel connected to God daily, able to converse with Him and receive feedback. In other words, I feel like I'm in a full relationship with God now. I want to thank The Rocks for making God easily accessible for me and for making attending church such a joyful experience. God bless you. Can we give our God a hand for that wonderful testimony? And, you know, over the years, we have heard hundreds of testimonies like that. And I believe as followers of Jesus Christ, we want to hear hundreds more. We want to hear thousands more of testimonies like that. That's what you know, move us as followers of Jesus Christ. Nothing, let me tell you, nothing should bring you more joy as a follower of Jesus Christ than seeing somebody comes to faith. Nothing should bring you more joy. Not money, not fame, not power, nothing. And that's why, you know, I believe we need every single person to take their place so that we can do this together. None of the stories that you have heard in this church would be possible had it not been for the hundreds of volunteers that dedicate their time, their money every week to teach your children over the other side of this 
building, to come early to practice in the morning, to come for on Thursday night for new music night, and to, you know, to come early to prepare the parking spot for you, to make this place clean and all that. None of the stories that you hear in this church would have been possible without the sacrifice of all these wonderful volunteers. And that's why we want to thank them. Can, can we actually thank them, those of you who are volunteers? If that's you in this room, can you stand wherever you are? I just want to acknowledge you. If you are volunteering, Rene, come on, everybody, look around you. Um, some of them come in the morning. Thank you so much. And let me tell you, they will agree with me when I say this, they can't do it alone. Some of them are tired. Some of them have been working double shift, triple shift, because we don't have enough people as we continue to grow in this church. So this morning, my message is very simple. Serve with us. Serve with us. If you have an inclination, you've been in this church for a couple of months or maybe longer, uh, maybe you're thinking, okay, maybe I should serve now that we meet again physically. Maybe this is the time for me to serve. If you're wondering if you should or not, let me tell you, you should, okay? If you're wondering if today is the day where you cross that line and say, yep, yeah, I'm going to just take the plunge, I'm going to volunteer, you know, sign up starting today. If you're wondering if today is the day, yep, yeah, today is the day. There's an old Chinese proverb that says, when is the best time to plant a tree? When is the best time to plant a tree? The answer is 25 years ago. That's the best time to plant a tree. When's the second best time to plant a tree? Today is the second best time to plant a tree. So if you are considering ministry, joining a ministry team here, please do it today. We're going to make it as easy as possible for you to serve. Do you know that in our church, you don't even have to be a Christian to serve? You know, a lot of people, they want to serve. They want to make something meaningful out of their lives. And I, I'm telling you, we have a lot of opportunities for you to do that right here in this church. You know, if you can play music, if you can greet people, you have a great smile, we can use you in this church to bless other people. So we want to make it as easy as possible for you to serve here. But maybe, if I can guess, the number one pushback that people have with serving is this. A lot of us don't feel qualified, do we, to serve? We don't feel like we're spiritually up there. You know, when we see people around us, when we see Renee up here on the stage, oh man, I don't think I'm as spiritual as Renee. I don't think I can serve God. I'm not there yet. Uh, I don't have enough Christian experience. I'm just a new believer. Or maybe you think I'm not educated enough and all that. I understand, you know. I, I have that pushback myself. When I was a new Christian, I said, man, uh, there's no way. I, I don't dare to even consider serving because I don't feel myself qualified. Which is why one of my favorite characters in the Bible is Peter. Uh, if you know anything about Peter, Peter is that loud mouth Peter, quick, you know, slow thinking, quick words. And Peter is amazing. And, and Peter, uh, when Jesus left the earth, gave the charge to the disciples to continue to preach the message of the gospel, Peter and John, of all the other apostles, they were so courageous. They were so amazing. One day Peter spoke, 3,000 people got saved. They believed in Jesus because of Peter. And he was so bold too in his preaching. The guy that you crucified, you crucified him. But he, he came to die for you. So Peter did that. 3,000 people got saved. And another 5,000 people got saved. He went to the temple, saw a man born crippled from birth, asking for money. Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I'll give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. And that crippled man from birth got up and walked, and the whole town was astonished. They were like, who are these guys? And this is what they said, right? Luke, Dr. Luke recorded what happened in Acts chapter 4, verse 13. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were, what? Highly educated? Of noble birth? No, they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were shocked because they expected people of high caliber to be able to do what Peter and John did and to be able to perform the miracles that they did. And they took note that this man had been with Jesus. Now, the NIV translator uh, softened the wording for us a little bit. But Dr. Luke, he didn't mince his word. He recorded because Dr. Luke is not only a first class a medical professional, he was a first-class historian as well. He took note of what people said, people did, and he recorded exactly what people said. So this is 
how the people called these guys, all right? I checked the word ordinary in the Greek. Guess what the Greek word is for ordinary? This is the word. Maybe you can figure it out. <laughs> Idiotai. Guess which English word we get from this word, idiotai. Just take out the word tie at the end, all right? Now, this is, again, this is not what Luke was calling Peter and John. Luke merely just recorded what people were calling them. This bunch of unschooled idiots, how is this possible? Let me tell you, God, the bad news is, I'm an idiot. You're looking at your pastor who's an idiot. And God, the good news is, God is in a business of using ordinary unschooled people to do his bidding. Let me tell you, because we believe nothing is impossible with God. I was just an immigrant kid, 18 years old, not speaking a word of English when I first came to this country. Who would have thought in a million years that God would use me as his mouthpiece to speak his gospel to the people. I would never have thought that. I would never have chosen me to do this job. Do you know what I mean? But let me tell you, God is in the business of using ordinary, unschooled people, maybe people that the world would not have used, but God is in the business of using anyone, anyone who will say yes to him. So let's go back to the beginning story of how these men, they had been with Jesus, how Jesus called them, and this is what makes the, the whole difference. When you are exposed to Jesus and His grace, you will never be the same again. That's why our whole series is all about. You will be forever changed. There's no way that you experience Jesus and His grace and you don't change. That's, it's not possible, all right? If it's true, then there must be something wrong in your understanding somewhere, or there must be some pushback that you shouldn't have had uh, that caused you to be like that. But if you had genuinely experienced the grace of Jesus, you will change just like the apostles did. In Luke chapter 5, this is the story of how Jesus called them the first time. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. By the way, the Lake of Gennesaret is an old name for Sea of Galilee. They're the same name. Uh, that's what happened with Palestine. That area is the same area, but over the years, they have different names uh, located to each area. The people were crowding around Jesus and listening to the Word of God. So as more and more people crowd around Jesus, Jesus got pushed further and further back into the shore. If that had kept going, Jesus would have drowned. But in verse 2, he saw the water's edge uh, at the water's edge, two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. They signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything and followed him. Now, this is a great story. If you love fishing, you know, you know, all the fishermen that I know, they love stories of great catch. And if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you would, you would have loved this story as well because we, would, we love stories of increase, great catch of people who come to know Jesus, people who come to know God. But do you know the miracle of a great catch was only possible because Peter and the apostles, the first apostles, before they were apostles, the miracle of the great catch was only possible because they said yes. That's why it was all possible. 
They had all the reasons in the world to say no, but instead they said yes. And I observe there are three reasons why they should have said no, but instead they said yes in spite of their busyness. They were washing their nets, and from what I gather, I studied like it takes hours for fishermen to clean their nets. And if they can't clean their nets, if they don't clean their nets, they can't go out into the sea the next day to catch more fish. So they were busy at the time when Jesus asked them for help. And not only were they busy, they were tired. Peter said, we've worked hard all night. They were busy, they were tired. Not only that, but they were discouraged as well. We work hard all night and we haven't caught anything. It's not like they have plenty mental space and all that. They were so discouraged. They were so tired. They were busy cleaning their nets because all the more they need to go out the next day to catch more fish because they didn't catch anything. Now, how many of you have used this excuse before to not serve? Oh God, I'm so busy. My work now, oh, if you had only know, known how busy I am at work, I just got this promotion, this new job and all that. Maybe next time, God. Um, how about tiredness? God, I'm so tired. We have two young kids at home. This is not a good time for us to serve at this point. Maybe when the kids are older, then we can serve. Uh, how about discouragement? business not going well, you know, you can barely sleep at night thinking about how your business can survive. You're very discouraged. You have no emotional, mental space to serve, uh, maybe at this stage of your, uh, of your life. So let me tell you, I'm not saying this in condemnation at all. Please um, understand me well. I have used these excuses myself, busy, tired, and discouraged, right? And I'm telling you, you're not unique. You're not the only ones who think this way. The disciples were probably thinking it. I was thinking it and doing it. But let me tell you, if you had said yes, like the disciples did, in spite of everything, then, only then, you will see the miracle of a great catch. Look what happened when they said yes to Jesus. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish, the nets began to break. They got help, filled the boat so full, the boat began to sink. That's how much catch they had. And if you look at the history of our church, and I'm not saying this to brag at all, but because a lot of the people who call this church home, without being paid one dime, without being paid one cent, they come early, like Peter said. They go home later. They sacrifice their priority percentage giving to this church because they said yes to the call of God, to the call of Jesus. We have seen increase after increase after increase, year after year after year after year. And if you think these numbers are not important, you would be wrong because these numbers represent people. These numbers represent young, young people, high schoolers who come to our church on Friday and they get to know Jesus early in their age. It, 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 the number represents families who come to our church, husbands who come to the rocks for the first time, not having been to church at all, but the wives dragged them and they loved it. They kept coming and they got baptized. They got to know Jesus. We got hundreds and hundreds of baptisms because people understood the power of saying yes to the call of Jesus, to the call of God. And now God increased our number still. Uh, on the 26th of July, we're going to start a new campus in Baldives. And it's so exciting, right? Donna is excited about that. It's wonderful. Now, think about it this way with me. Why would God trust us with a new community if we had not been faithful with the community right here in Kennington? Let me tell you. We have, what, close to 400 volunteers in this church, but even then, we need more people. A lot of our volunteers, like I said before, they do, do, they do double duty. Now with Baldivis coming along, we may have to help them, at least at the beginning. We may have to pull some people that, that way, and then just, you know, to prime the pump, if you like, and to just encourage them and get them going. That means there'll be void in this place that needs to be filled. So we need everybody to play their part. And let me tell you, when you do, you're going to see a great catch in this place, a catch of souls like you wouldn't believe. And that's what happens when you are near Jesus. When you are around Jesus, the people saw these unschooled, ordinary people, they recognized they had been with Jesus. That's what being with Jesus will do to you, right? Listen to uh, what happens then. When Simon Peter saw this, what is this? The great catch. He fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. I'm an idiot. Lord, go away. I know who you are. You are God. Uh, I'm not even worthy to be near you. Go away. And Jesus said, no, I won't go away. 
I come here for you. I come here so that I can use you, so that you can be my channel of uh, blessings to many people. That's why Jesus said, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. You know, at that words of acceptance from Jesus, I want you to imagine the love and the acceptance when Jesus said that to Peter. Peter who said, go away, God. Why are you even talking to me? Rabbis in those days, they only talk, they only select few really selective people to be their disciples. And Peter said, you're choosing me as a disciple? Go away. And Jesus said, no, I won't go away. I want to use you. You know what happened when you have been near Jesus and experienced his grace? Verse 11 is what happens. They pulled their boats up on shore, left how much? Left everything and followed Jesus. If they were poker players, they saw the cards, royal flush. When you've been with Jesus, you have royal flush. You go all in. You say, I'm all in. I want to encourage you. Today is the day because the window of opportunity is very limited for us. Yeah? Paul calls us ambassadors of Jesus Christ. And what do ambassadors do? We represent the country where we're from and represent our country well. Like this guy. His name is John Aquari. I don't know if you heard his story, but at the 1968 Olympics in Mexico, he ran the marathon, right? Halfway through the marathon, he broke his knee and got injured, injured his shoulder and all that. But he kept running. The last finisher finished hours before, before him, but he kept on going. And he ran into the night, into the stadium. I want you to watch this short video clip, and I want you to pay attention to what he said as to why he kept running despite not winning anything, being so late. Uh, listen to what he said. <laughs> different version of that clip without the music as he entered the stadium you saw how sparse the stadium was by that time but as he entered the stadium there was a huge roar as if the stadium was filled with people my country didn't send me 5,000 miles to start the race my country sent me here to finish the race Jesus didn't die on the cross for you to just go to heaven that's automatic. That's a given. Salvation is God's gift. You can't earn it. If you're not a Christian, that's a good news for you. You can't earn your way to God. God came down for you. You just need to believe Him. So, God didn't save you just so that you can go to heaven. Jesus didn't die on the cross just so that you can go to heaven. But Jesus died on the cross so that you can finish the race that He started 2,000 years ago. Jesus doesn't have plan B. Plan A, you go into the world, preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what we do here in this church. Like I said, we want to make it easy for you. We don't want you to delay. So even right now, you can take your mobile device and go to the rocks.info. It's very simple. It will take you only one minute to do it. So what you do, you fire up your browser, Safari, Explorer, whatever, and then you type on the search 
bar the rocks.info, not the rocks.church. And then you will see this menu, these tabs. And the third tab says next step in green. When you click that, you have a few options. I'm new here. Next welcome dinner. Join the ministry team. When you tap that, you'll be taken to this form. Like I said, it will take you less than one minute to fill. Just fill your first name, last name, and all that. And how long you've been attending this church. And which campus do you attend, Beldivis or Cannington? And then you can select a maximum of three teams that you consider serving in. Guest services, family ministry, production. Family ministry desperately needs your help. Production, ministry services, and so on. And... Um, this coming Sunday, like seven days from now, Sunday, we're going to have a general orientation for those new team members. So if you sign up, you'll be contacted. Come next Sunday, this Sunday at 12.30. And, um, and uh, yeah, start the ball rolling that way. And we also have a booth outside. We have table set up. If you, have, if you have any questions at all about which department you want to join, Feel free to go there and check them out. They would love to answer your questions. But whatever you do, do not delay. We need every single one of you to make it work here in this church. Shall we do that? Awesome. Why don't you stand on your feet right now? If you need any prayer, our prayer leaders will be standing here. They would love to pray for you. You don't have to walk through life alone. Um, everything will be kept confidential, obviously. And it is a custom in our church to be dismissed by receiving a prayer of blessing. If you are comfortable, if you want to receive it, why don't you just open your hands as a sign of our dependence on God. Father God, we thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for reminding us of how much you loved us. And your grace is always sufficient for us. And you choose ordinary people like us to make a difference in other people's lives for eternity, for your kingdom. Use us as only you can. And dismiss us with your blessings, we pray. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you wherever you go. May God bless you. May God bless your family, your children, your grandchildren. May God bless your work, your business, your ministry. May God bless your relationships. May God bless everything that you do so that through you, people around you will be blessed and God's name will be glorified now and forevermore. All God's people who are blessed, say together with me now. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Have a wonderful Sunday. I'll see you next week.